This is the High School Football America podcast for April the 27th, 2024. I'm Jeff Fisher. The High School Football America podcast is brought to you by GameStrat, America's premier sideline instant replay system with outstanding reliability, faster speed than huddle sideline, plus GameStrat has awesome customer service. They pick up the phone when you need them. It's a great product, doesn't need a lot of help, but you coaches that have made the switch, and there's over 500 of you, know that the big thing is they are there to help you when you need them the most. Plus, they have different plans priced right for every coach's budget. To get a demo, go to GameStrat.com or click on the GameStrat banner ad located on every page of HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. And when you talk to the fine folks there, let them know about High School Football America because if you mention us, they'll give you an HSFA friends and family discount. All right, heading to Detroit, Michigan. You might have heard there's a big thing going on there. The NFL Draft. Oh, and uh, on the line with me right now is a good friend of ours who we've been working with, I guess it's been about five years at NFL Play Football. Roman Oban is joining us right now. He will be uh, announcing the selections for uh, rounds five and six. Roman, a Super Bowl champ, he himself was drafted back in, uh, let's see, it was 1996 by the Giants, number 66 overall. So he's going to be uh, the guy that lets the uh, the future NFLers know where the professional journey is going to start. Uh, Roman is the uh, National Football League's Vice President of Football Development. He's taken some time, about an hour and a half before he has to get ready. Hey, Roman, thanks for taking the time, man. Hey, Jeff, it's always a pleasure. How's everything going? Everything's going real well. Uh, man, just been enjoying the coverage on all the networks from uh, what's going on there in Detroit. Uh, boy, you've got a big gig today. I guess this is year number three. Let the people around the nation, let them, let them know what you're going to be doing today because it's a big gig. you got to let them know where they're going to start their professional career. Yeah, well, it's always uh, exciting and, and seeing how the draft has grown, and uh, it's really been awesome to be a part of uh, the draft selections um, on day three. Um, first two years, I, I would do most of the seventh round and, and some of the sixth round. I'd always say that there's more Hall of Famers in the seventh round than the uh, fifth and sixth combined. So fans fans, uh, fans get excited about, about just seeing their team and these young kids. And I remember the Brock, Brock Purdy was the famous one a few years ago. Obviously, he's a Mr. Irrelevant and did a great job for the Niners. But you never know you never know an unnamed kid out of an unnamed school that becomes a a guy who can help a team win a Super Bowl, so it's always awesome. Yeah, and and you've had a lot of fun too. We were texting back and forth late Thursday night. The uh, Gonzaga grad that you are out of DC, couple of guys picked in the first round at one and eleven, including the overall number one. You still pumping your chest? No, I'm really happy about that. I mean, by the time I left Gonzaga and, and got to the NFL, there was like one other guy that had played in the NFL, um, like in the '60s. Um, and so over the years, there's been a, a bunch of, you know, Johnson that mostly wasn't drafted. Uh, we, you know, Gonzaga High School doesn't have as many as, uh, let's say, an IMG. And, you know, in terms of the powerhouse that those guys uh, put out. But uh, to see where Caleb went, he was obviously the number one player in high school coming out of 2020 class. Uh, and uh, Olu Fashano wasn't a five-star guy by any means, but went to Penn State, developed. Uh, I think got redshirted and, uh, and, and just kept getting better. And so it's awesome to see that, and I'm happy for them, happy for their families, and definitely the, the Gonzaga Eagles uh, community. No doubt about that. Roman Oban from the National Football League, Vice President of Football Development. We worked directly with them in High School Football America at uh, NFL Play Football, announcing the selections in rounds five and six today. Um, man, it's been a great scene for the first two days. Uh, no doubt the final day is going to be awesome. Let's, let's go back to your days, 1996, number 66 overall. What, what do you remember about the time when you were waiting to hear your name called? It's it's actually an interesting story. Um, I thought I would be a, a def, definitive like second round pick, and uh, the draft was on a Saturday. Uh, it would be the first three rounds on Saturday, the next four rounds would be all day Sunday. I think starting like nine a.m. And uh, my mom didn't have; uh, she only had basic cable. She didn't get the the bigger package just in case. <laughs> so after the second round, the draft goes to uh, ESPN two, and we didn't have ESPN two. And probably about 15 minutes later, it's probably 8, 8, uh, 8 p.m., uh, sometime 8 o'clock at night, my uncle calls me, like he's like a family friend, Uncle uh, Bill, calls, and, um, and you know, the Giants just drafted you. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and literally five seconds later, there's a call at the other line, and it actually was the Giants. He was watching it online. 
uh, some live ticker, however sophisticated the internet was in 96, I don't remember, but um, he was watching on some ticker, then he calls me, literally, the Giants called me 30 seconds later, then, then and got the word from uh, Dan Reeves at the time, you know, who's obviously passed away, and it was the head coach, and, um, you know, George Young also was the GM uh, at, at the time as well, but it was just, it's nerve-wracking, because, you know, you go through a college season, the All-Star Games, Senior Bowl, East West Shrine Bowl, all that stuff, the combines, you run the 40, and then and then you just wait. It's a waiting game. <clears throat> you know, you come out of high school, everybody wants you. You come out of college, you don't know who wants you, who thinks you're not as good, and you start reading Mel Kuyper stuff. And, and you just – sometimes you don't even know if you're a good football player, depending on what these teams say about you. But you're, you're happy to get it done, and, and then you, now you got to walk in a locker room and earn earn a, earn a living and, and compete with some guys that are 30 years old. And so it was it – was, uh, draft was nerve-wracking, but it was just – it's really a start to a great career, and I just – Want all these guys to know if if you're listening and waiting for that phone call, even if you're a free agent, it's about getting a camp and getting on a roster and, and just trying to get better as a football player. Yeah, you're pretty good. I think a dozen years later uh, makes makes the uh, the the answer pretty easy right there. Roman Ovid on the line with us today. You also made me think. I, I thought back to the internet. Then it was kind of probably like the Pony Express back in the day. It wasn't yeah, probably agreed. very good. So, well, well, based upon that, the next obvious question is: So then, what goes through your mind when you step up there in front of a, a couple of hundred thousand people today? It's it's a little different from '96 then. Yeah, I mean, again, the draft fr- footprint went from a you know a ballroom, a banquet room style in New York City to what it's become the last few years. My first draft working for the NFL was when the draft moved to Chicago. So to see where it came from Chicago to now, uh, it's been Philadelphia, uh, Dallas, and, and Kansas City, and last year obviously Vegas was was a big one. Uh, Cleveland, they had the virtual draft, which everyone got a kick out of that with Commissioner in his couch. But it's, I think you just. Two things. You don't want to mess up anybody's last name because that's just Bob and Grandma watching it. <laughs> and uh, you just want to make sure you get everything right. And then, and then you, the fans get excited. So if it's if it's a local team, they get excited. Like, let's say, Cleveland, for example. If uh, if it's a rival, like if you're in Cleveland announcing a Pittsburgh draft, you get the booze. So <laughs> anytime a Vikings pick or a Packers pick or a Bears pick, the fans will start booing because it's obviously a rival team. Uh, with the Detroit Lions in their division. So it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to it. And some of the uh, the former players last night ha- had some fun j- still jabbing. <laughs> their, their old arch rivals, I guess, is the best way to put it. Hey, before I let you go here, because I know you're busy, just real quickly, uh, give us a little bit of a scoop of what you're, you're doing with, with NFL play football. I mean, you're going over to Africa, which is your home country, right? You, you, you guys immigrated from uh, Cameroon back in the day. I know there's a lot of big stuff going on. It, probably you could talk for 10 minutes, but what's a snapshot for the listeners around the country about what you're doing right now we're just trying to grow and advance the game and just work on uh just football developmental initiatives um obviously we, we talked about the high school and youth stuff a lot that was the foundation of the work uh been a lot of college outreach now and with the how we educate college athletes in locker rooms uh, on el- draft eligibility uh work on the all-star games we had a first time uh, kicking showcase or specialist showcase at the combine Big 12 Pro Day, we, we, we had for the first time working with the Big 12. So it's a lot of initiatives, and I, and I get to see all these kids during that process and always wish them luck and, and, and that they get their name called and you know, they make their families proud. So uh, it's a busy time of year, but I love the work and I love working with great people like you as well. Well, thank you so much, and we're looking forward to seeing you today up there on the big stage. Hopefully you don't get too many of those big names with lots of consonants and, and too many vowels or something, because I, I don't handle those well, so hopefully you get some short names. Roman, thank you so much for everything you do, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. And you can keep up with the NFL Draft through the lens of high school football by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com or following us on social media as we go pick by pick. All 257 selections where they played high school football, it's all for you at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Through the first three rounds, Florida leading the way with 10 former high schoolers being chosen. Texas has had eight, California and Georgia seven each, Maryland six, and Louisiana four. Now there are five schools that have had two players chosen. You heard Roman bragging about Gonzaga. The other four, IMG Academy out of Florida. You've got uh, Pinson Valley out of Alabama, Ravenwood out of Tennessee, and St. Francis Academy 
out of Baltimore. Keep up with all the news today by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. We hope the weather uh, gets a little better watching on Good Morning Football, uh, watching Good Morning Football this morning on the NFL Network. A little rainy there right now, but hopefully uh, the weather will improve for rounds four through seven. NFL Draft 2024. The High School Football America podcast is brought to you by NFL Play Football. Coaches, don't forget to go to playfootball.nfl.com for some great resources to help you improve in the coaching profession. That's the High School Football America podcast. I'm Jeff Fisher.